Welcome home and welcome to Sweeter Than Honey. God's words for today comes from Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 through 12. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 through 12. We will read from the NRSV. Please carefully follow along and hear the word of the Lord. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went to the potter's house, and I saw him looking, working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I have planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good that I intended to do for it. Now therefore, say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, This is what the Lord says, Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. But they will reply, it's no use. We will continue with our own plans. We will all follow this stubbornness of our evil hearts. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, today's passage reminds me of our as kids because our kids love to play with clay. And uh, for today, but God instructs Jeremiah to go to the potter's house and observe the work of the potter. As Jeremiah watches, he sees the potter working on a piece of clay. However, the clay becomes spoiled or marred in the potter's hands. In response, the potter reshapes the clay into another vessel as it seems good to him, to the potter. This visual imagery illustrates God's role as a divine potter and his authority over creation, us. And just as a potter has the power to shape and reshape the clay according to his will, God has the authority to shape the destiny of nations and individuals. The clay symbolizes humanity and specifically the people of Judah. God explains the significance of the allegory to Jeremiah. He emphasizes his sovereign authority over nations and his ability to bring about judgment or blessings based on their response to him. You know, God uses this allegory to communicate his message to Judah. God reveals that he is like the potter and the people of Judah are like the clay. Just as a potter can reshape the clay, God can change his plans based on the people's actions. If a nation turns from its evil ways, God will relent from bringing disaster. Conversely, if a nation departs from righteousness, God may bring judgment. You know, verse 11 through 12, God, uh, God's plea to Jer Judah underscores the importance of heeding God's warning and repenting. He warns of impending disaster if they continue in their stubbornness. Despite God's uh, desire for repentance, the people's response is to claim that they will follow their own uh, plans. Overall today, God's sovereignty, humanity's need for repentance, and the consequence of disobedience is what's at play. The imagery of the potter and the clay vividly care illustrates God's power to shape and reshape destinies based on the choices and actions of individuals and nations. The passage highlights the call for Judah to repent and turn back to God, underscoring his willingness to forgive and change his course of action when met with genuine repentance. The lesson extends beyond Judah's context, you know, serving as a timeless reminder of God's authority, his desire for relationship, and the importance of aligning his will through repentance and obedience. And for us today, EMS, I hope that we can realize that as much as God created us, He wants the best for us. And although our passage talks about, you know, He has the will to control our lives in a way, in this way or that, we're reminded that also He willingly gave up His Son for us. And that what would have been easy as a potter to kind of just get rid of the clay, He decided to continue to mold us, continue to shape us, continue to mold us into the vessel and the, and the, and the work that He sees fit and to, into the good uh, work that He wants us to be. And so at the end of the day, as much as this passage might be weird in a way for us, can God really just get rid of us and make us in a, in a snap of his finger, yes, but at the same time, remember that he's continuing to shape us every day, to shape us into the best that we can be, living through his will and living on the love of his heart, love, love for him, his love for us in our lives. Let's pray. God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for being with us. Heavenly Father, as you continue to shape us, please continue to shape us um, well. Please continue to show us and to guide us in the way that you see fit. 
Father, we thank you for always being with us. We thank you for always helping us to worship you and to be your um, creation. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen.